In this series, we have discussed many different types of symbols. In part one, we discussed how symbols are used, and then we discussed the all-seeing eye, also known as the eye of Horus, and the third eye. And then we discussed the horn hand sign, also known as the devil horns, or sign of the curse. In part two, we discussed the 666 hand sign, the inverted cross, and the peace sign. Part three, we went over the pentagram and the star of David. In part four, we discussed the Baphomet and all that is associated with this wicked symbol. And in the last part, part five, we discussed the yin yang symbol and the esoteric concept of duality. If you haven't watched these videos, please make sure you go back and gather an in-depth understanding of these occult symbols. These are symbols that are ingrained into our society. Things that we see practically every day that without knowledge just goes over our heads, but are also placed into our subconscious. It is done for a specific reason. Like I explained in part one, the world is run by symbols. Symbols are a method of communicating an idea without having to speak a word. Manly Hall, a 33rd degree Scottish Rite Freemason, philosopher and occultist said this about symbolism in his book, The Secret Teachings of All Ages, which was written in 1928. Symbolism is the language of the mysteries. By symbols, men have ever sought to communicate to each other those thoughts which transcend the limitations of language. In a single figure, a symbol may both reveal and conceal, for to the wise, the subject of the symbol is obvious, while to the ignorant, the figure remains inscrutable. Hence, he who seeks to unveil the secret doctrine of antiquity must search for that doctrine, not upon the open pages of books which might fall into the hands of the unworthy, but in the place where it was originally concealed. And his quote is a great segue into this discussion of symbols in this part of the series, because I believe no other organization on earth uses symbols in the communication more than the Freemasons. They are able to communicate to each other in plain sight because of our lack of knowledge on their secret occult beliefs. And because they have degrees in the organization, what a low-level Mason may know may be drastically less than one like Manly Hall, who is a 33rd degree Mason. But for the uninitiated like myself, without a great deal of reading and research, much of this is just hidden from our understanding. And we will never know all the secrets, and I don't want to. Because just knowing the basics allows me to understand that these symbols are not something that I want to include in my life. So we will see these symbols every day and think they are just inconsequential and mean nothing, while they are actually passing on the promotion of Lucifer right in front of our eyes. My goal is not to make you an expert on their symbols and organization, but simply to open your eyes to what is in front of you and make you aware so that when you see a huge symbol right in front of your face, you are aware and not manipulated into accepting occult beliefs because of lack of knowledge. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says, My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. So what I want to do is give some knowledge. Let's begin. The Square and Compass The Masonic Square and Compass is an easily recognized symbol of Freemasonry. Whenever you see this symbol, it is undeniably representing Freemasonry. The square is used in both Masonry and the Eastern Star. Eastern Star writer Mary Ann Slipper, in page 36 of her book, The Symbolism of the Eastern Star, she states, When turning square corners in floor work, it is well to remember that this is acknowledging in action the great truth of being. The square not only means the acknowledgement of that power, but also our belief in the finished work of the master builder, who someday will summon each into that great temple not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. It should be noted that the master builder that Freemasonry refers to, also known as the great architect, is Lucifer, their light bearer. The square is acknowledging his power and his coming into his work of ruler of this world. In speculative Freemasonry, the square is a symbol of morality, hence where we get the phrase, you're being a square. It's the official emblem of the master of the lodge. The square and compass as a symbol together incorporates the yin-yang symbolism as well. The square represents the female, passive, generative principle, the earth, and the baser, sensual nature. And the compass represents the male, active, generative principle, the sun slash heavens, and the higher spiritual nature. The two symbols displayed together once again represent sexual union. In Albert Mackey's Masonic Dictionary, 
He says, In Masonic symbolism, the square encompasses refer to the Freemason's duty to the craft and to himself. Hence, it is properly a symbol of brotherhood and there significantly adopted as the badge or token of the fraternity. The square and compass are just another form of the six-pointed star, also known as the Star of David. Do you see it? We spoke extensively about the six-pointed star in part three of this series. In the square and compass, there's often a letter G found inside of it. In the lower degrees, the Mason is told that the G stands for geometry or God. The occultist Eliphas Levi, however, informs us that the G stands for Venus, and that Venus symbol is lingam. A lingam is a symbol of the male private part. Remember this, because we will see another prominent symbol soon that's a lingam as well. Now, I don't know if it's commonly known, but Venus is another name for Lucifer. Lucifer is the Latin name for Venus. So let's add to that understanding. What is the symbol for Venus? Yes, it's this sign. Most people just associate this as a symbol representing women, but it also represents Lucifer. Again, being that Lucifer is the Latin name for Venus. So when you understand this, you will see that at this year's Super Bowl performance, where Jennifer Lopez had the sign of Venus for the world to see and to cheer for, they were not only cheering for women, but for Venus, aka Lucifer. That's how deceptive these signs are. But let's continue. In Albert Mackey's Masonic Dictionary, he also says, The letter G, which ornaments the Master's Lodge, is not only expressive of the name of the Grand Architect of the Universe, but also denotes the science of geometry, so necessary to artists. You know this church is in the exact center of the city. The elders decreed it so that everyone could be equally close to God. I like that. The geometry of belief. You see, the G refers to Lucifer, the Grand Architect. But there is so much hidden within this symbol. This is just the vague information that they have allowed into the public. Very simply, when you see the square and compass, just know that it is a sign for a Luciferian organization. They are bringing the light of Lucifer to the world. They feel they are doing a great work. The Obelisk. You see the symbol many places. Two major locations are right in Washington, D.C. and in the Vatican Square. Most people see it. Most may know it's called an obelisk, but past that is where many people's information comes short. Another name for a four-sided pillar is the obelisk. Pillars have always been worshipped as gods. In Egypt, the obelisk stood for the sun god. The New Age magazine had an article by 33rd degree mason Henry Ridgely Evans. In the article, he said, Osiris, the god of the underworld, was also depicted in the form of a pillar. An obelisk is another lingam, like I mentioned when we referenced the G. The obelisk represents the male sex organ. Pan, the goat god and god of sensuality, was often represented as an obelisk. The ancient Greek historian Diodorus reports that Queen Semiramis erected a 130-foot obelisk in Babylon, and it was associated with sun worship and represented the phallus of the sun god Baal or Nimrod. The obelisk is a long painted four-sided shaft, the uppermost portion of which forms a pyramid. It is said that the word obelisk literally means Baal's shaft or Baal's organ of reproduction. It is widely understood that the obelisk is a phallic symbol honoring and celebrating regeneration of the sun god Ra of Egypt. The obelisk was the first point sun rays hit as it ascended, which the pagans believe symbolized rebirth between earth and heaven. This should be especially shocking when we realize we have a giant obelisk in our nation's capital, known as the Washington Monument. In keeping with this understanding that this symbol is used as a representation of the sun god, aka Baal, aka Lucifer, that will get old because you will see most of these symbols directly point to Lucifer. But being that this symbol is a representation of him, it's not a coincidence when you see how tall the Washington Monument is. It's 555 feet. I mean, you're probably like, so? Now multiply 555 by 12. Yep, that's 6,660 feet. 666. 
Today, we may picture obelisks as lone monuments, but they usually stood as pairs before the pylon gates that marked temple entrances. Hieroglyphic inscriptions on the four sides of the stone were named the reigning pharaoh and include a dedication to the god of the temple. The obelisk is a pagan symbol paying homage to the sun god. Everywhere in the world where there exists a major power center, such as Rome, London, and Washington, D.C., you will find an obelisk. This gets deeper, though. The Roman Catholic Church adopted this Egyptian pagan obelisk and placed a cross on its peak, thus combining the two meanings. Emperor Caligula, in the year 37, brought this particular obelisk from Egypt to Rome. It originally stood in his circus on a spot to the south of the basilica, close to the present sacristy. Pope Sixtus V had Domenico Fontana move it in 1586 to the center of St. Peter's Square. The obelisk is also a sundial, its shadows marking noon over the signs of the zodiac and the white marble disc in the paving of the square. This gigantic monument sits in the center of St. Peter's Square to this day and is a testimony to early Christianity's pagan influence that we see in and on churches across every continent on earth. Deuteronomy chapter 16 verse 22 says, You shall not set up a sacred pillar, which Yahweh your Elohim hates. So with this understanding that this is a completely pagan symbol and Yahweh hates it, it should not be associated at all within the church. But that's the worst part. The worst part is that this symbol has been adopted by many proclaimed Christian churches. They are just not calling them obelisks, but steeples. Steeples, the pointed roofs of churches, have been included in church buildings since the conversion of Constantine and his proclamation making Christianity the official religion of his Roman state. This is a completely pagan symbol and the church tried to hide it by adding crosses at the top of them. This should not be ignored. If you see this on any of your churches, understand they have adopted pagan symbolism following man. The leadership is already showing they are taking on traditions of men. Anytime you see this symbol, always remember it is a pagan symbol paying homage to the sun god. It is a phallus, and you will continuously see this in pagan symbolism. The Ankh. Okay, here's another one that we see all the time. People see it, but I don't think that many know what it really means. The Ankh symbol has influenced tattoos and jewelry, and organizations associate themselves with the symbol as a trademark. The Ankh is the Egyptian hieroglyphic symbol for life and eternity and is often referred to as the original cross, where it represents the unity between male and female. The loop of the Ankh represents the womb of a woman, and the vertical line represents the male genital. Now to other people, they primarily see it as a representation of the woman. Where the loop is, it's still the womb, but the vertical line they believe is the birth canal. Either way, the Ankh or crux sensata is a symbol for life. A dictionary of mysticism explains the Ankh as the Egyptian cross shaped like a capital T with an oval loop on the top, symbol of life in occult tradition. It was used by the gods as an instrument for awakening the dead to a new life. The Ankh is an ancient symbol for immortality, fertility. A former witch has revealed the Ankh as an emblem to identify the wearer as a worshiper of the sun god Ra, a seeker of the Satanist beliefs and one who practices the worship to the unknown gods of the supernatural. The wearer acknowledges the sun god Ra, works the voodoo of this unseen world through his hex. If you are a believer, you should not be wearing this symbol. This has been a big trend over the past couple of decades within black culture. People believe that because the Ankh has been around for thousands of years and comes from Egypt, it's a great thing that has become a fad because now it brings knowledge to African people. People that have claimed the Egyptian beliefs as their original beliefs love this symbol. Now, I will be speaking about this as a complete topic separately, but the point I'm making is that people are wearing the satanic symbol as a show of pride for what they feel is their original culture. And the ironic thing is that it has nothing to do with their original culture. That's another story. In their hieroglyphs, the Egyptian gods and kings are often shown carrying the Ankh to distinguish them from mere mortals. The Ankh symbolized eternal life and bestowed immortality on anyone who possessed it. It is believed that life energy emanating from the Ankh can be absorbed by anyone within certain proximity. An Ankh serves as an antenna or conduit for the divine power of life 
that permeates the universe. The amulet is a powerful talisman that provides the wearer with protection from the evil forces of decay and degeneration. They believe it represents spirit, mind, and matter. This symbol has definitely been made popular by pop culture when many mainstream artists like Beyonce, Rihanna, or Erica Badu have worn it. People believe that Roman Christians stole the Ankh and adapted it with the religion. And there is much truth to this, but what a person must always do when understanding this is understand that these were pagans mixing in their pagan belief and traditions with the original belief in Yahshua, which was heavily infiltrated and watered down by Constantine and the Roman Catholic Church. It has nothing to do with the true belief found in the Bible. There is nothing biblically sound relating to the Ankh. And a person should know that just because there were black people in Egypt, this does not mean that this is where your family originated from. But even if they did, this symbolism is purely pagan that joins the masculine and feminine together. While people believe it symbolizes life, they do not understand the connection with all these other pagan symbols. Just like the six-pointed star, the obelisk in the middle of a circle, the baphomet, the yin-yang, and many other symbols, there is always mixing of male and female together. This is because it all goes back to Lucifer, who is androgynous, both male and female. It's mixing father god with the mother goddess, the sun god with the moon goddess, fire and water, the union of heaven and earth, as above, so below. This is occult symbolism of the mystery religions. And when you see these symbols, this is all that it is a representation of. It is an easy way of representing the Baphomet, representing Lucifer. Stay away from this. The swastika. Now, I'm going to discuss this symbol because it's very deep and it's related to the Ankh. Occultist Helena Petrovina Blavatsky, in her book, The Secret Doctrine, The Synthesis of Science, Religion, and Philosophy, on page 587, she says this about the swastika. Few world symbols are more pregnant with real occult meaning than the swastika. In the first part of the symbol series, I said that you cannot change the meaning of a symbol. If a symbol was originally created to portray or communicate a specific message, it does not matter what you decide that you want to use it for. It still means what it always meant to mean. The only thing that it means for you is that you have been using and representing something that you don't completely understand. And from that statement, there are many challenges due to the swastika. People believe that this symbol originally was a symbol for good before Adolf Hitler adopted it. But that is the farthest thing from the truth. They believe this because of some of the themes that have surrounded it. This symbol is a very old solar symbol. The name comes from the Sanskrit word swasti, meaning well-being or so be it. People consider it a symbol for good luck. In examining the elements that make up the swastika, the first thing to notice is that the shape of the four arms resemble a wheel. Like a wheel, the swastika can rotate in either direction. But here we go again. If the arms are pointing in a clockwise direction, then it is symbolizing the sun, the male principle. If it is pointing counterclockwise, then it resembles the moon, the feminine principle. This is a pagan symbol. In the Royal Masonic Cyclopedia of History, Rites, Symbolism, and Biography, we find that the swastika was the hammer of Thor, celebrated in the mythology of the Norse nations, and the tradition ran that when Thor threw this golden cross, it struck and, like the boomerang, returned again to his hand. In masonry, however, we find this hammer of Thor exceedingly important and a very ancient usage among the Goths. And in the Masonic fraternity, it has survived in the form of the mallet. Now let me go over this so there is no confusion. Because if you watch the Avengers, you know who Thor is. And you're probably wondering how he got in this discussion. First, understand that the gavel is an important Masonic and Eastern star symbol. In ancient times, the gavel referred to the hammer of the god Thor. Thor is another pagan god. Occultist Albert Pike gives us additional names for Thor. On page 368 of his book, Morals and Dogma, he writes, Thor was the sun, the Egyptian Osiris, and Neph, the Phoenician Bel or Baal. This god Baal, under the name of Thor, is called the Prince of the Power of the Air. You see, 
not only does Satan have the same title as is given to the god Thor, but we should notice that the word Thor means thunder. Thor was the god of lightning and thunder in Norse mythology. This is a significant statement for Satanists that use the symbol called a satanic S, which resembles a lightning bolt. In Luke chapter 10, verse 18, Yahshua says, I beheld Satan as a lightning fall from heaven. Or Ephesians chapter 2, verse 2 says, In which you once walked according to the courts of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. I want you to remember this anytime you start liking this character in the Marvel movies. The world is so deceptive, making us like these satanic gods by making them likable in comic book and then movie form. They just sneak it right in, having our children identify with Satan. It's ridiculous. But the point I was talking about is the hammer, not really Thor. Masonic author J.S.M. Ward, in his book Freemasonry and the Ancient Gods, on page 238, he writes, Thus we see that the hammer, or gavel, and the towel were originally the same, and this is the natural evolution of symbols. For the towel cross is evolved from the phallus, and that is the symbol of God, the Creator. I hope you recognize that word phallus. He is saying that the symbol of the gavel, the hammer, and the towel cross were all the same, and therefore their meaning would be the same. On page 241 of the book, he continues saying, But this is not the only place where the towel cross occurs. The gavels, or gavels, are all T crosses and combine in one symbol, the hammer, the sign of rule, and the T cross, the symbol of the male or creative side of the deity. Unless there should be any mistake, the T is placed on the apron of the master of the lodge, though placed upside down, so as to give also the symbol of the square, and also to emphasize its phallic meaning. The Book of Sign Language of the Mysteries states the Tau Cross is a very ancient symbol representing the phallus, and hence it often stands for our animal passions. This is the Tau Cross. It is a very ancient symbol. When you hear people say the cross is a pagan symbol, this is what they are always referring to. This was the sign of three major deities, the Sumerian sun god, Temus, the Roman god, Mithras, and the Greek god, Attis. This is the same T-shape that is placed on the forehead of Tammuz followers when we see done on Ash Wednesday to many Catholics. And he said to me, you are to see still greater abominations which they are doing. And he brought me to the door of the north gate of the house of Yahweh. And I saw a woman sitting there weeping for Tammuz. That's Ezekiel chapter 8 verses 13 and 14. This is the symbol of the pagan slain and risen god Tammuz. It is the symbol for just another counterfeit Masonic Christ. Now the Latin cross is the cross that is associated with Christianity, and its accounts of origin vary, but many accounts link it to the Tau cross. I personally do not believe that this version of the cross is a Masonic symbol, but the truth is that there are many versions of the cross that are, like these. So as I've grown in my understanding, I do not try to use any symbols to represent my faith, because no matter how we swing it, there is no scripture telling us to do so. Bearing our cross is a metaphor for suffering the same as our Savior. It is not a command to carry a symbol as the Catholic Church has made it mean. But back to the point I'm trying to make. I used all of that information to bring us to this understanding. The Ankh, which we just went over, is a variation of the Tau Cross. The Hammer of Thor and the Gavel are also Masonic symbols that are variations of this Tau Cross. And the swastika is also the same thing. It is a variation of the Tau Cross. The swastika is not a good symbol that has been made evil by Adolf Hitler. It has always had occult beliefs tied to it, which is why Hitler used the symbol. You will see the symbol used over the millennia by various pagan cultures and empires. In the Dictionary of Mysticism, we find that the swastika is a very ancient and widespread symbol, one of the most sacred and mystic diagrams in occultism. In general, it is regarded as the symbol of the sun. In India, especially, it is used as a symbol of good luck. Hitler used the swastika to represent his Nazi party. It should be known that Hitler was very much into the occult and was a disciple of occultist Elena Blavatsky. Again, referencing her book, The Secret Doctrine, 
the swastika is purely phallic. The swastika, the most sacred and most symbol in India, the Jaina cross, as it is now called by the Masons, it is the devil sign, we are told by the Indian missionaries. So though this sign is associated with Hitler and the Nazis, and so many people associated with that evil, it is a much older symbol that has always had an evil association. These symbols are always a representation of Lucifer. Now tying all these symbols together, there is a common theme. Anytime you hear symbols associated with the masculine or feminine attributes, that's pagan and should be avoided. Anytime you hear something that represents the sun or the moon, or is phallic, or unions of male and female, this is pagan and should be avoided. These Masonic signs are all pointing to Lucifer, their light bearer. They are directing us to their Masonic Christ, who believers know as the Antichrist. The reason these symbols and many more of the symbols are so prevalent in our society today is because we are close to the revealing of this Antichrist. These symbols are all around us and they are using them to communicate wickedness to us. They are preparing us for their new world order and programming our subconscious to accept him or at least create enough wicked spiritual energy to create the conditions for his coming. These symbols are not inconsequential. I know this video threw a lot at you. There's a lot to be understood. Many people ask, well, what symbols do believers use? You see, we don't need to communicate through symbols. Our belief is not hidden. It is not esoteric, given in the dark, in secret. We do not need to mask our beliefs and hide behind symbols. We don't hide. We live and shine in the light of our Savior. We walk boldly in his authority. We cast down all wickedness, demons, spirits, and principalities in the name of Yahshua. These symbols were transmitted over time to communicate a mystery religion that is now coming out into the open, which the world seems ready to accept. Believers are the only thing standing in its way, which is why the world hates us. I have explained this to you so that your eyes can be opened around you. Masonic symbols are everywhere, and because we are not initiated, we are not able to see them clearly. But they are everywhere. These symbols do not make you evil if you have used them unknowingly or without pure understanding. But they are just communicating messages that we did not understand. And in these last days, it's time that we do. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of Yahweh is. This is your charge today. Walk in it and be blessed. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please make sure to like it and share it with others. If you haven't done so already, please make sure to subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. As always, I'd like to thank all who donate and contribute to this ministry. Your donations are truly a blessing to this ministry. Thank you for your love and support and letting our Father use you. You are truly a blessing and I really appreciate your support. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again everyone for watching. I love you all.